Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're going to talk about Paramount, Paramount Plus, and Paramount being reduced to junk, downgraded to junk by the S&P. Uh, actually, their, their debt rating has been downgraded, but we're going to talk about this because they are a big loser in the streaming wars. They're also purging a lot of their cartoon content off of Paramount Plus. Very interesting decision to do that. So I have to wonder if they're going to be foisting that content off onto another streaming service, kind of like Warner Brothers did. And uh, yeah, I can't imagine Paramount failing as as badly as they have. Uh, with such winners as the uh, the Pink Ladies prequel to Grease and uh, a bunch of other uh, major misfires for them. That was so bad that they they took it off the platform after like, what, like a month or two? <laughs> I think they got rid of it because it was awful. And we're seeing a lot of streamers do this. We're seeing Disney do this too. Uh, Willow didn't perform for them, so they took it off the platform completely. Now, I don't know what kind of a kickback they get, what kind of a uh, financial incentive they get, tax write-off they get, but we're seeing a lot of these streaming services burn content rather than keep it on the platform because then they can use it as a write-off or they can they can you know foist it off onto someone else. We've seen a lot of uh, HBO and Warner content go over to like Roku and Tubi. And really, these studios would have been so much better off just producing the best content they could produce and then put it on Netflix or, or Hulu or something. But they all wanted to be the boss. They all wanted to be in charge. They all wanted to have their own streaming platform and they all blew themselves up. Like, I think you can trace back a lot of Hollywood's current problems to the streaming wars and the overproduction of content and then the doubling down on the diversity and inclusion mandates for said content that nobody watched. All of these things are connected. Now we're seeing this massive purge. So let's uh, let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Um, yeah, I don't think Star Trek Discovery is going to save them. I really don't. I think Picard was kind of the last good Star Trek season three of Picard. I need to clarify. Season three of Picard was like the last good Star Trek we're going to get. Uh, you know, um, Strange New Worlds, uh, not terrible at least it didn't start out terrible but then they had that musical episode and i i stopped watching i didn't even watch that episode i'm like you know what if this is what they're gonna do if they're gonna have the klingons sing like the backstreet boys i'm out i'm just i'm done i'm done it's coming from variety paramount global's debt rating downgraded to junk analyst says more buyers likely to emerge for media companies assets with ratings cut ouch paramount global's debt rating was cut to junk status by credit rating agency S&P Global, which cited the media conglomerate's ongoing challenges with free cash flow generation relative to its debt. S&P on Wednesday said it expects Paramount Global's free operating cash flow to debt will remain well below 10% through 2025, and the adjusted leverage debt to equity ratio will stay above three and a half times through then. The agency say the ongoing deterioration of the linear television ecosystem and the elevated investments for its direct to consumer streaming model for the downgrade. Basically, nobody's watching your shit and nobody's subscribing to your streaming service. And it's a shame because there is actually some pretty decent stuff. Uh, the Knuckles series looks pretty good. And like I said, Picard season three was pretty good. People actually said, as far as Star Trek's concerned, that Star Trek Prodigy was one of the better things to come out of the Kurtzman era. I, I haven't seen it, so I can't vouch. I did not expect that, but people said it actually was not a terrible show. But they're getting rid of a lot of cartoon content. I think Prodigy, they took it off the service, and they, I want to say they they kicked it over to, to Netflix. Paramount will need to execute its plan to substantially improve streaming losses over the next two years to mitigate further downside ratings pressure. It said their long-term debt was $14.6 billion at the end of 2023. A rep for Paramount declined to comment. The S&P downgrade comes a week after word emerged of an $11 billion bid by private equity firm Apollo Global Management for Paramount Pictures. Uh, S&P's credit rating cut on Paramount Global increases the chance that more buyers for its assets will come forward. I mean, this is where we're at, guys. They're not buying a company. They're buying bits of a company. They're buying the th things that the company made in the past. And they're just buying pieces. Like basically Hollywood is a garage sale, right? 
I mean, that's what it is. It's a garage sale and everybody's selling bits and pieces of everything. Everything must go. Everything that doesn't make money must go. Wells Fargo analyst Stephen Cahill wrote in a research note, uh, it's because S&P is a set assignment of junk stats to its debt negates change of control provisions and an acquiring party would not need to immediately repay or refinance the debt. Okay, so it's junk debt. So somebody could come in and buy it as I understand it. And uh, yeah, and then just not have to pay that debt for a while. And they could probably try to make some money off of the stuff they bought. Uh, we think that any party interested in all or pieces of Paramount, including studios, IP, CBS, and real estate, are more likely to emerge now that the debt change of control provision is void. They're gonna, they're just gonna chop this company up and sell the bits off, like freaking hogs to the slaughter. Man, it's just like you want pig's feet, you want pork rinds. Do you want cutlets? What do you want? Pork chops? What do you want? We'll sell it to you. Whatever you want. This whole pig. We got to sell this whole freaking pig. Even the eyeballs. Even the tongue. We got to sell it. Somebody will buy it. <laughs> Sources familiar with the thinking of Sherry Redstone, non-executive chair of Paramount Global, says her preference is to not sell the company off in pieces. Rather, she'd rather sell it to uh, Skydance, I guess, was one possible suitor. As part of its ratings update, SP issued a stable outlook for Paramount, which reflects our expectation that leverage will decline to around uh, four times in 2024. This is all a bunch of uh, jargon that I personally do not fully understand, but it's basically it's junk at this point. Um, previously, the firm had a BBB minus rating with uh, s and um, so there we go, guys. So this actually ties into what's going on now, which is a fire sale and panic, panic at Paramount. Uh, Paramount Plus is unceremoniously dropping 10 kids titles, including shows that I thought were popular. Well, OK, these are the reboots. Rugrats, Blues Clues and You. That's the uh, 3D Blues Clues and Big Nate. Uh, this come from Cartoon Brew. Paramount has unceremoniously and without warning dropped 10 kids titles from its current catalog, including several animated shows. Uh, this week's removals come amid uncertainty about Paramount's future. The legacy company has struggled to adapt to the streaming era and is laying off 800 workers this year. The entire staff at Paramount's preschool streamer, Noggin, Nogging, is counted among those layoffs. Noggin, my kids used to watch Noggin all the time. We used to watch Noggin all the time. Franklin and, and Little Bear, and but uh, yeah, those, those were different times. Uh, the parent company plans to sunset the platform this year. Additionally, Paramount Global's majority owner, Sherry Redstone, wants to unload her stake in the company. When the Noggin shutdown was announced, a Paramount spokesperson indicated that many of the platform's titles would migrate to Paramount Plus to become kids' shows, specifically Nickelodeon's kids' shows, and are among the most watched programs on the platform. They are. Uh, Nickelodeon, well, I don't know, guys. I don't know. After the uh, Dan Schneider thing, I have to wonder if parents aren't going to just like between that and some of the the questionable stuff that's been going on with Blue's Clues and stuff lately. Like, I got to wonder if parents aren't like, yeah, you know, Nickelodeon's not really safe <laughs> for my kids. Are they going to pull those Dan Schneider shows off of, of Nickelodeon? I, I kind of wonder if they won't or they're going to, I know they're going to censor some of the episodes, but yeah, you've got like all these shows that he worked on and all these kids coming forward and being like, yeah, he's creepy. He's creepy. And he worked with creepy people. Um, but yeah, they said, given the company's current state of affairs, Paramount's decision to drop kids content is a bit of a head scratcher. It is kind of weird. So this is what they're dropping. Are you afraid of the dark blues clues and you that's the, uh, the reboot, I guess it's pony. I don't know what that is. Middlemost Post. That sounds like a very exciting show. Ollie's Pack. Ryan's Mystery Playdate. Is that is that Ryan's World? How old is that kid now? Like 48? Uh, San Diego of the Seas? No idea. The girl, Le that girl, Lele. No idea. Big Nate, I know, is based on the comic strip and Rugrats. The new Rugrats, which is CG, which looks like trash, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it's worth noting that most of these titles are relatively new, having been re released within the last two to four years. And some like Blue's Clues in You and Rugrats are, are still airing episodes on Nickelodeon's linear network. Cartoon Brew has reached out to Paramount and Nick for more details. You're not going to get, I, I seriously doubt you'll get an answer. 
Um, so Paramount has not confirmed that this is a total erasure of the programs, but the shows have been removed from the official Nick website. That said, there's a wide, there is wide speculation that the company will try to sell at least some of these shows to other platforms, probably Netflix. Yeah, Netflix seems like a strong contender given this long and fruitful relationship with Nick. I, again, I don't understand why Paramount thought it was a good idea to just start its own streaming service when they could have just made content for Netflix and it probably would have been a much better deal for them. I don't get it. Yeah, they have a new SpongeBob thing over there, Saving Bikini Bottom. Uh, they have the live action Avatar, which is getting yeah, mixed reviews. Um, now, my wife and my kids watched it and they said that they did not think the live action uh, Avatar The Last Airbender was that bad. They thought it was okay. It definitely wasn't on the same level as One Piece, but it was okay. Uh, so now we have artists that worked on these shows. They said artists who worked on some of the removed Nick shows are chiming in on social media in a situation that feels very similar to what happened with Warner Brothers. Uh, they purged in August of 2022. Uh, storyboard artist uh, Regis Reggie Camajo is among the hardest hit artists by the cuts. He said, uh, Final Space, Prodigy, and now Big Nate, three shows I worked on. We're streaming for less than two years. Final Space is still gone. Who knows where Big Nate will end up before adding, well, uh, make that four shows I worked on. Uh, Middlemost, I animated Goku Parker. I haven't watched that show, so I have no idea. Rugrats, story artist. Lee Cree tweeted, Rugrats 2021 was my first boarding job revisions. It's sad to hear they removed the show without any prior warning. But hey, that's American animation, am I right? Pretty much. I mean, the American, the Western animation scene is going to be probably, I would say, the hardest hit by the Hollywood garage sale because it doesn't turn the profit it needs to turn unless you're promoting a toy line or something. In fact, I think one of the commenters, the only commenter, actually, Jeffrey uh, Thrash, said that the uh, the biggest problem with streaming platforms right now is, for whatever reason, they are not incentivized to keep canceled or otherwise unprofitable shows available for people to legally watch. Um, they're unprofitable. The, the, like, look, the animation is expensive, right? So these shows, they have to, a lot of times, be bankrolled by toy sales. The reason that they're or like 5,000 reruns, 5,000 hours of reruns per week of Teen Titans, if that's even possible. Teen Titans Go is because, you know, toy sales and tie-ins and merch. Um, SpongeBob is popular. You know, it keeps the advertisers happy. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the little kid shows, the, you know, the PJ Masks and stuff, whatever's big now, Coco Melon. Um, you know what I'm saying? They sell toys. And I know a lot of people, we, we did an interview with... Uh, Spectre Creative, the guy who was in charge of Masters of the Universe Classics. And we talked about how a lot of uh, current year animation people, whether they're fans or they work in the industry or whatever, make disparaging comments about 80s, 90s toy lines and you know how the cartoon shows were basically commercials for those toy lines. But I'm like, the toy sales are what keep it going. You know, and a lot of these these shows, a lot of them just don't have toy lines that that sell and kids aren't buying toys you know older kids aren't buying toys like they used to toys now seem to be you've got two markets you got like preschool and then you got like adult collectors but in between they're they're on their ipads they're playing video games you know it's 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 weird it's the, you're, you don't have a bunch of eight and ten year olds playing with action figures like you did back in my day it's just not happening. Uh, Ninja Turtles seems to be a, a one-off. Like Ninja Turtle figures seem to do very well, and that's owned by Nickelodeon now. They bought it, uh, but I think that keeps them incentivized to keep making new shows because they they can uh, make new action figures, and the action figures seem to sell pretty well. Like I don't see Turtle stuff on clearance, like I do Marvel stuff or Star Wars stuff or even Transformers. A lot of times are on clearance, so I don't know, guys. It's just it's just all imploding. Everything's imploding. There it is. Uh, there it is. So good luck to those of you affected. I'm sure, like I said, it's going to be a, a lot harder for people working in this business to make a go of it because so much of this is going to be outsourced. But it's just kind of the new, the new reality. Hollywood got greedy and now they got to sell everything. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.